Bisa lah. Gerit lah. Kosit, ya. Hello. Bye. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Adrian Yeo uh, from Adrian Yeo uh, PLT, firm of Chartered Accountants. Uh, today, uh, this morning, uh, we are very pleased to share with you uh, for two hours from 10 to 12, include Q&A on uh, the budget uh, 2022. Uh, today, uh, uh, this morning, we have uh, two speakers, uh, myself and Cindy, my tax director. Uh, I'll do the introductory and some highlights where uh, Cindy will take over after 20-25 minutes or so to cover the uh, more details. And in this afternoon, we're going to have a Mandarin version uh, 2 to 4 uh, uh, about the same subject but in Mandarin. Uh. So this, this budget uh, 2020 uh, with the theme of a pros prosperous uh, Malaysian family with uh, three main uh, purpose, uh, protecting and driving recovery of life and livelihood, rebuilding the nation and uh, speed up uh, reforms. Uh, just have a snapshot on the budget. Uh, this year we are on the 24th year of continuous uh, budget deficit uh, where the, the government normally we, we do uh, uh, income uh, income against expenditure. Huh? Income is always Suf sufficient to cover in, in expenditure, you can see the top two line, income and operating expenditure is always uh, about about the same, uh, uh, about the same, income expenditure, whereby uh, operating uh, development expenditure is always equal to deficit, uh, uh, plus uh, the new COVID relief, uh, COVID fund. Uh, so these two we make up for budget deficit. So on in financial management view of point point of view, uh, deficit is not healthy. Uh, but because of circumstances, uh, we've been on twenty four years deficit that amounted to six uh, percent of the GDP uh, deficit. From the 234 billion, then we give a breakdown of 234. Uh, the figure that we are interested uh, will be on uh, mainly primary two or three figures, the company tax, uh, individual tax, and SST. Huh? Uh, company tax uh, from two or two or uh, 50, uh, 20, uh, 50 billion increase to 60, include, increase to 65. Uh, so, uh, so I mean, the, the country uh, didn't expect a drop in revenue. Actually, it, it's an increase. Even in the COVID year, 2021, there's, uh, there's a sharp increase of 50 billion to 60. Uh, and 2022, expect another increase of 5 billion. Then the the percentage has increased from twenty two to twenty seven to twenty eight, uh, whereby in the individual uh, tax from thirty nine billion, uh, it dropped to thirty six this year. The next year a small rise. Uh, for SST from twenty six billion. To twenty six, to twenty seven. So, uh, that mean there's a slight dip in two or two one. Uh, expect uh, an increase in economic activity in two or two two two. That's why you see the number increases. So I mean, 
from these three numbers, uh, especially company tax, they mean the, the government is expecting more collection. More collection may be two ways. One, one is uh, business is doing well. And, and the other side, from the in, inland revenue side, maybe they are more, uh, more stringent in enforcement. Huh? So I read it as uh, two, two, two main reasons, economic recovery and more stringent in collection for tax. Uh, the income, uh, just th this one is just in, in the pie chart form. Uh, so the main one is from the income tax followed by individual. Uh, this, these are the two items. Uh, income tax 28%, personal tax 16%, SST 12%. How the government spend the money 2, 2, 3, 3 billion. 233 is from this figure. Uh, 233, eh? 233 billion. How they spend the 233 two, two, three billion? 233 three billion, most of the money is spent on uh, emolument, that means uh, salaries, uh, our big team of, uh, of government employee, employees uh, that take up the 37%, then 37 followed by retirement. So I mean salary plus retirement, almost half of the expenditure is on wages uh, for the employees. Uh, then 19% uh, on debt service charges. Uh, so this one sent about 68% come from this. Uh, then 3% go for the grant. Uh, that is uh, applicable to uh, to SMEs, uh, uh, like automation grant, uh, uh, IT grant, uh, or this are grant. So in short, uh, this, the government's money, half go to salaries, employees, and about 20% go to service of uh, uh, debts. Then there were about thirty percent for miscellaneous. So this this number uh, a, a bit skewed. Huh? The employee portion is too high. This chart highlight uh, uh, GST and SST. Huh? GST, uh, you we go back to two o one seven where we have full collection, we have uh, forty four billion. The the collection compared with twenty seven billion now. Uh, this year twenty seven billion, our total twenty two to one. So the GST cons uh, SST cons uh, constitute twelve percent, but GST. In 2017, the full year collection is 20%. Uh, so GST, so the government lose about, uh, maybe about 20 billion here, yeah? 20 billion. If they were to con continue with uh, GST, we should be collecting uh, maybe about 47. So there's a shortfall about 20, 20 billion. So that's why uh, uh, the 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 current government and the previous government also talking about uh, possibility of coming back uh, to reinsert GST. Uh, to reinsert GST. Uh, so we don't know when. Uh, I think uh, we expect GST to come back. Uh, so this GST have an impact on if GST were to come back, uh, it's not if it will come back, it's a question of when. Uh, so when GST come back, then uh, for businessmen, when you want to structure your, your business or uh, strategy, then you have to take GST into consideration. Uh, when you want to set up subsidiaries, 
uh, have new uh, new line of businesses uh, that uh, think of GST uh, for investment purposes. Uh, yes, this one another a snapshot on the different type of taxes. We compare Malaysia with developed world like UK. Uh, uh, okay, this is sorry. UK, uh, Malaysia income tax, this Malaysia income tax is 1 to 30%. UK is actually 25 and 40%. There are two rates on it. I, next time I change it to uh, 25 or 40%. Corporate rates are lower uh, than the UK. Uh, most of us study in UK in accounting, so you, we use UK as an example. Capital gain tax, uh, Malaysia only have property as a capital gain tax, whereby in UK, uh, capital gain tax include all, uh, anything capital in nature like property, shares, art, antique, chattels. Uh, so the tax rate is uh, 18 and 28, uh, change again, 28%. There are two rates. Uh, the lower, ta lower tax rate is 18, higher is 28. Whereby Malaysia is now it become zero. Next year is zero to thirty percent. Might be put zero to thirty here. Yeah. I don't want to change capital gain tax. Uh, uh, inheritance tax. Uh, Malaysia abolished inheritance tax in uh, nineteen ninety two. I think. Uh, and since nineteen ninety two, our inheritance tax is zero. Whereby UK is is forty percent. Uh, I think the exemption is 400,000. Anything in excess of 400,000 pounds will be taxed at 40%. Uh, in UK, the GS, uh, in UK called VAT, uh, in Malaysia called GST, UK uh, VAT is 20%. Uh, Malaysia used to be GST for a short while, 6%. Now we come back to SST. SST for service tax is 6, but for sales tax is 10. Also, our SST and our SST is six and ten percent, huh, Teresa. Six and ten percent. Mm. Uh, six for SST, uh, service tax. Uh, you put service, then the ten for sales tax. Mm. So from this, from this, from this chart, uh, so in the tax system, uh, Malaysian is paying much lesser than. In taxes, in total taxes, compared with the developer, uh, developer. That's why the social welfare uh, slightly lesser, uh, especially for unemployment. Okay, foreign source of income. Uh, I'm not going to read through all this. Uh, so this this new new budget. The new budget uh, say next year, next year onwards for effective next year, any foreign source of income remitted to Malaysia will be taxed at your income tax rate. Uh, that one uh, later on, Cindy will explain more in details how maybe with some illustration uh, how it works. Uh, I, here, I just want to highlight certain things here. Uh, foreign source of income was, was abolished in 2004. Uh, last time, we used to have a uh, tax on foreign income uh, remitted to Malaysia. Remitted only, uh, remitted. Uh, not remitted, not counted. Uh, uh, we abolished in 2004. Uh, now, the income tax make, make a return to impose this tax. Uh, so what is the implication? And, and if you have money overseas, what do you do? Uh, uh, some businessmen, uh, if they do export or they do import, uh, there's a, a, chance, a, a high chance that they might have, you might have foreign bank accounts. Uh, somewhere. Uh, so, 
what do you do with this money? You have to stop and ponder. Uh, should you leave the money where they are now? Or is, it, is this a winner opportunity for you to remit all or some of the money that reside overseas? Uh, you send the money back now uh, before by 31st December 2021 the money received is not caught under the, the, the income tax act or the guideline uh, but if you were to remit from 1st 1st 2 or 2 2 onwards then you have a lot of, answer, a question, you have a lot of answer, questions to answer about the source, the quantity, uh, the amount of this, uh, then that one, it, it will, will be subject to tax. If not, then you have to explain. Unless you explain this, this is not your income. This is your capital remittance. Uh, the capital remittance will lead to another question. Why the capital outside? Uh, you have a lot of questions to, answers, to answer. Uh, so, what do you do? Uh, so now with this, the voluntary disclosure in 2018 at the time, 2018 uh, two, three years ago, we did voluntary disclosure and the auto, the, the auto exchange of bank information with 100 something countries. Uh, so the income tax already have our information. Uh, uh, the popular bank account that we have, uh, Malaysian has, will be like uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, UK, Australia. Uh, these are the countries that fall under uh, auto exchange of bank information. Uh, so if you have bank accounts in this country, especially substantial amount, uh, let's say about a million ringgit in the bill, uh, uh, most likely, the Malaysian income tax already know that you have this bank account ex ex existed, uh, exists, currently exists in foreign country. The account can be either in your name, your spouse's name, your children's name, or your sibling's name. All this, uh, most likely, income tax would, would be aware of. Uh, so, if you have this bank account in overseas and the amount is substantial and you always have some shadow uh, middle of the night you don't feel comfortable uh, so it might be you have to think seriously uh, whether should you remit this money before the year end uh, if you were to send this whether you need you also have to consider whether you want to go for this voluntary disclosure. You only give, we, are, we are only given six month window from January 2022 to 30th June 2022. The six months window, whether you want to surrender or voluntary disclose your past earnings, uh, which shall be taxed at 3% tax rate. 3%. And the, the government will take, it, income tax will take whatever thing you have submitted in good faith. I.e., they're not likely to go back, unlikely to go back to touch you. Uh, interrogate where were the sources. Uh, so you, you all think about this or some of your cross ones who have this concern about foreign source of income. Uh, so for, when you remit money from foreign, a foreign country, actually you can split the remittance into two, source, uh, two types. One is capital remittance, another one is revenue remittance. Capital in, remittance is uh, your investment. And uh, that is not considered income. Uh, but revenue, revenue remittance is 
some form of income. Uh, it can be your gain in shares, gain in trading in shares, uh, gain in disposal of properties, uh, 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 sale of antique, uh, art, uh, chatters, and also interest income, whether legal or not legal, all these sort of income are, compete, are con considered income earned. Uh, so uh, the capital, the, the income earned when they remit to Malaysia, uh, there will be some double tax issue. Uh, some, some of the income might be taxed, already taxed in overseas. Some are not taxed. So when they remit back, I think you have a lot of issues to handle. Uh, if you are legitimate, not an not issue. Uh, so I mean here, uh, we do a remitted basis. So ours is, uh, our tax become a bit hybrid. It's a bit of international tax, uh, but it's not on earn, but on remittance. Uh, what is remitted only is taken as, as income in Malaysia. Okay, so I touch on, on the foreign remittance. So you all take note, think about it, especially if you have substantial amount, let's say above a million ringgit overseas, uh, either in your name or your, your family member's name. Uh, then you, 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 think, you think about it, whether should you remit the money if the money, if, especially if the money is sitting idling, let's say in Singapore, get 0.5% or Hong Kong, also similar interest rate. Uh, so is it, does it make sense to bring them back? Okay. Now I go through the last part of the presentation. It's about RPGT. Uh, RPGT, uh, this, this text is the most changes tax in Malaysia, uh, RPGT. Uh, I think over the past 20, 20, uh, 20 years, RPGT rates might have ding dong, ding dong for queue and changing, I think for at least six, seven times. Uh, so the tax rate, uh, the first, the, either the first two year change, they become the first three years, then the tax rate keep on changing. When, whenever there's a prime minister that come in, then they, that, that one year they give exemption, all sort of different type of arrangement. Uh, so this uh, last round, when Lim Guan Eng was a, the finance minister, he, he took away uh, 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 exemption RPGT after five years uh, for individual from 0%. We used to enjoy 0%. Uh, when Lim Guan Eng was in power, then he put back to 5%. That time, a lot of hue and cry. Uh, this current fi finance uh, minister had put a uh, reverse that, that, that 5% for individual to 0%. Uh, and also, uh, the last two years, there's, there were no RPGT. So uh, that was a big relief for for some individual uh, factory owner, uh, shop owners, they, when they sell, sell those property, there was no GST impost. Uh, either uh, when they own it in their personal name or in Sinem uh, So during the GST era, uh, many transactions were aborted uh, because of RPGT, no, because of a GST, because they need to charge GST on shop lot, even though an individual who own two units of commercial property, so that time the individual seller had to charge the buyer 6%. Uh, and for Sinem Bahad, as long as the turnover is more than half a million, even though you own one property, uh, they said your turnover is more than half a million, so you have to charge GST 5%. So during that time, a lot of, uh, there are 
numerous property transaction that was stifled and was aborted. Uh, so now, uh, effective next year, all this become very clear because first thing, there's no GST. The second thing, there's no more RPGT. If you own property for more than five, five years, then that, this is only applicable to individual. Uh, the company is still the same. After five years, the RPGT is still 10%. Uh, so this RPGT, the tax rate for individual, what do you mean by individual? Individual can own a property in, a, their, in our personal name. So we also can own shares in Sinem Bahad. Uh, we own shares, I mean, we own the share, let's say ABC Sinem Bahad. So have my wife, uh, my, my wife is a shareholder, I'm also a shareholder. So as far as RPGT is concerned, either I own, when I this. Either I dispose of the property in registered in my name, where I dispose of after five years, my RPGT is zero. Uh, so what happened if I I use a Sinem Bahad to buy buy a, a house or a shop lot? Uh, let's say if I, I use a company to buy a house. So if if the, the share, if, if, if the house was bought more than five years ago in the Sinem Bahad, then in the Sinem Bahad, I have two ways of selling off my investment. Either I can, the Sinem Bahad, sell off the house. If the Sinem Bahad sell off the house, become a company disposer of property after five years, then the tax rate is 10% for RPGT. But there's another scenario. I, the company didn't sell off the property, but the shareholder themselves decide to dispose of their investment. So the, the shareholder dispose of the shares. So when the, comp, when the shareholder, individual shareho shareholder, there are two types, one is corporate shareholder, one is individual shareholder. Individual, sh individual, individual shareholder is like, let's say a typical Sydney hat husband and wife. So if the husband and wife sell off the share to the purchaser, then this, this one is also exempt because this company is a real property company. Huh? So disposing the share is equi equivalent to individual dispose of the investment uh, of the company. So this investment, even though the share is classified as real property company share, but the tax rate after five years is zero. Uh, so I go one step further. Sometimes uh, people use another Sinem Bahad to own the share of the investment Sinem Bahad. So it means there's a holding company. So a holding company dispose of the subsidiary company shares. So it's not considered as individual Indiv individual disposal is considered a corporate disposal, corporate company dispose of the shares. So this corporate disposal, the RPGT stay at 10%. 10%. Uh, if, if you are confused, uh, some of you might be confused. So uh, later on, you can ask me or, let, or Cindy subsequently. Uh, so these changes, what is the impact? Uh, you know that uh, some, so how, how do we make use of these changes, RPGT for individual days from 5% to 0% after five years? Uh, assuming, uh, lately I, I enter in, pardon? Okay. I dispose of, uh, I bought a piece of land, agriculture land. Uh, I signed ID. I saw I, I, I talked to the owner. I said, hey, uh, do you want to defer the S&P until next year? So the, the owner, the seller, agreed to, 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 to resign the agreement and redate it next year so that the, the seller will, will skip the RPGT. So we enjoy the 0% RPGT. Uh, so this is a small window. If the, if the, if the agreement is not stamped, so you you can choose to 
to re redate the SP. Or you 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 intend to sell off the property now. So you can sell now, or you can arrange to, to fix the transaction price, but you date the SP, let's say 2nd of January, 2020. So you avoid the 5%. Huh? Another one is if you were to enter in, you, if you used to use a cinema hut to buy your investment, now it might be you want to reconsider. Should you use personal name to buy instead of cinema hut? Uh, especially if, if your holding is for mid term, let's say five to 10 years. Uh, so if five to 10 years, if you were to end, you think that the, the property is going to appreciate significantly, say double. Uh, I say if the property is 1 million, but you expect uh, when you want to deposit, say maybe eight years down the road, uh, that, that was 2 million. So the gain is 1 million. So if you were to buy under a cinema hut, so you'll be taxed at 100,000, because it's 10%. Uh, against individual holding, 0%. Uh, so uh, these are the things that you can rethink. Uh, certain transaction. Is it worthwhile to put, put back to individual instead of putting it in the basket of cinema hub? Okay, then the other one about retention sum. The retention sum now on disposal property is 3%, but I come next year, if you, if a property, if you dispose of your property within three, uh, three years, then the retention sum is 5% called by the lawyers. So uh, I've covered uh, my part. Uh, before I pass over to, to Cindy, uh, uh, I open the floor for Q&A. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, so you all can either ask, uh, or you have to do it last. Okay. So in this, in, Okay, might be, uh, maybe you can type in the chat, chat box. Maybe I, we, I take the question at the end of the talk. So now, uh, uh, thanks for listening. I'll pass over uh, the session to Cindy, my tax director, who, have, who uh, she has been with me for about uh, for, fifth, uh, for 14, 14 years. Uh, maybe 14 years and 20 days. Uh, uh, Cindy, uh, over to you. Not like my story. Hi, a very good morning to all of you. So today we have the Zoom training. We have the Zoom talk and at the same time, we do conduct the FB live. So if you find this um, topic, this uh, budget 2022 will be helpful to you and your friends and your colleagues. Do, do please do share our FB live. So during the live, you still can uh, listen to our budget talk 2022. So in the last uh, next one hour, I will share with you on the budget highlights the company highlights, personal highlights, and indirect taxes highlights. So let's move on. Okay, the first thing is on the budget highlights. Of course, this is the imposition of the foreign source income. And I believe this is a very hot topic amongst the businessmen, especially those businessmen who have many foreign uh, bank accounts. Okay, and this is not a new, the exemption under the current position. So there is an exemption for the resident person. It could be the individuals, it could be the companies. When you bring back your foreign source income into Malaysia, as is now, it's exempted from tax. You are not required to pay any tax. But when come to 1st January 2022, pretty soon, it will be about one and a half month times from now. So any foreign source income bring back from the resident person, included individuals and company, is liable to tax. Is liable to tax. And then let's look at this exemption of the foreign source income. 
because this exemption of the foreign source income was first introduced back in year 1997 or 1998 during the Asian financial crisis. So the whole purpose of the government, why then uh, they have this exemption policy is just to encourage the people to bring back the money into our own country, Malaysia. But now why the government need to take another step, another measurement, one to revisit of this exemption? Because one of the reasons is that um, in last month, October 2021, our country, Malaysia, was added into the grey listing. Grey listing as one of the harmful country on the foreign source income region. This one, in order to align back of the compound with the global tax standard, so the government has revisit of this exemption by withdrawal of this exemption and then come to next year, all the most of the foreign source income will be taxable. Okay, some of you may ask, uh, how about the, um, the dividend from the overseas? So the clarification made by the income tax officer, they said the dividend from the overseas is subject to tax. Is subject to tax. And then how about, uh, some of you may ask, if I work in Singapore, but I stay in Malaysia. So how about the CFP money, the EPF money? We call in Malaysia is EPF, but in Singapore is CPF. So if I bring back at the retirement age, will this amount subject to tax? The answer is still yes, because the CPF from the Singapore money is not the approved uh, like EPF in Malaysia. Huh? So this is the things that you need to think about. But of course, it's not all the source of income will subject to tax, like the capital gains. Let's say for the disposal of the listed company shares, it's in Malaysia, such income is not liable to tax. And, and such income, like the dividend profit from the dividend of the overseas uh, shares, if you bring back to Malaysia, still not subject to tax. So that's why you have to identify so which categories of the income is subject to tax or not subject to tax. So we will fall back to the derivation of the income under the Section 4 of Income Tax Act 1967. So let's move on for there's a grace period. We call it as a special voluntary disclosure for next, for the, in the, okay, if you bring back the money now within this one and a half months, like Adrian just mentioned, it's not liable to tax. But how about if you want to bring back in next year, 2022, of course, there's a transitional period we call SVDP for the foreign source income. And the government will tax you on 3% of your gross income. For example, if you bring back 1 million, so government will tax you 30,000 gross on income. And the be beautiful part is the government will not conduct any audit reviews, investigation, or impose you any penalty on the money. That means they just receive it in a good faith in the next six months. So the due date, you need to declare to the income tax. Okay, so the due date to declare of such foreign source income during the transitional period is by 30th July 2022. Okay, so after that, when come for the July onwards, when you bring back the foreign source income, it will tax at the prevailing tax rate. It very much depends on whether your individuals, say if you bring back a million already, your individual tax for sure will more than 30%. More than so you have to pay 30% on the foreign source income. Whereas for the company, it could be taxed at 24%. Oh. So I think we're still waiting for the FAQ and the guideline for the guideline on this uh, foreign source income. Okay. Okay, another slide, the um, number two is we want to touch on, on this unsolved business losses. So for anyone who have any questions, so welcome you to key in our chat box because we have our own panel to help you to answer all the questions. And for the slide, don't worry. So we will send you the slide right after, maybe by today or tomorrow, after our sending out via the email. Huh? So, okay, this is the unsolved business losses. Unsolved business losses in year 2019 budget, so the government have uh, propose this uh, time frame, seven year time bar to carry forward of your business losses. And this business losses has been extended from seven years to 10 years during this year budget, budget year 2022. So what 
are the benefit to have this unresolved business losses. These business losses, you can offset the future profit. Offset the future profit. Yeah? So that's why whatever business losses that you incurred in year 2018, you look at the diagram here, 2004, then you are allowed to carry such losses up to year 2028, 10 years time bar. So after whatever losses carry forward after year 2029 will be forfeited. So from here, you can do some tax planning here because it can offset for the future business profit. Okay, how about the losses incurred in year 2019? Another example here. 2019, 10 years, you can carry forward. Then you can, can last you until year 2029 only. Okay. So just now, this page, then we did a summary for you okay, on the losses and it can be carried up to which year. Okay, this is the third method then. It's on the imposition of the Chokai Magmo. Chokai Magmo in English, we call it as the prosperity tax. And this is only one of tax. Will be this additional tax, prosperity tax will be taxed in one year only, which is in year 2020. So what's the purpose of the common? Of course, first of all, they want to widen the revenue base for the government. Okay, second thing is during this COVID-19 pandemic, even though many companies has closed down, about 37,000 SME has closed down, but there are some companies they are doing, they did pretty well. They're earning the super normal profits. That's why the government in year 2020, for those companies who earn the super normal profit, so the first chargeable income, first 100 million of chargeable income will be taxed at 24%. And the chargeable income above 100 million will be taxed at 33%. Now, according to the IRB statistics, only 233 companies will be affected by this prosperity tax. Then who are these companies? These companies, majorities are from the manufacturing, from the uh, Takafu and from the insurance companies. Of course, some of them are from the listed companies. So one of the company uh, is top. Top growth because the top growth they are paying about two million tax per year. So this is uh, not affected by most of us because we are under the SME categories. Okay, let's look at the example here. Just give you a scenario how it works on the prosperity tax. For example, if your company has chargeable income of one hundred fifty million, the tax you need to pay now is thirty six million only say in year 2021. But when you come to year 2022, the above 100 million, the 50 million will be taxed of 33% instead of 24%. So the tax you need to pay is 40.5 million. So how much is the additional tax? The ad additional tax here is 4.5 million. Yeah? 4.5 million. Okay, let's move on to the reinvestment allowances. So far, any question, please uh, put it in the chat box. Then we will answer one by one if possible. So this reinvestment allowances is only enjoined by the manufacturer and the selective approved agriculture activities. Not all the companies that like you are in the business of trading in the service industry, then you are not allowed to enjoy these reinvestment allowances. So before I explain further, so let me just have a very quick uh, introduction of what is the RA. In short, we call it RA. RA, this is the incentive given by the manufacturing companies. If the manufacturing companies, they buy a 1 million worth of plant and machinery, they can claim, claim capital allowances. On top of these capital allowances, they can claim called RA, reinvestment allowances, up to 60% of the amount that they have incurred. Meaning to say, if you purchase 1 million plant and machinery, you can claim up to 1.6 million of the uh, tax deduction. Oh, so this is uh, commonly used and applicable for the manufacturing company. So the purpose now, the RA, the government gives you extension of time. And normally this RA, you can claim up to 15 years only, one five, from the first year that you claim RA. 
But now government is very good. They give you additional two years extended for the RA. And this is not new because as you see this diagram, the RA allowances has been given for extension for three times already. During the special RA, budget year 2016, during the Benjana, and during the budget 2022. So let's look at the example here. If the RA of your company RA has ended in year 2015 or before, because of the extension given by the government, you can extra claim three years plus three years plus another two years. So three plus three plus two equals to eight years plus the original RA of 15 years. So in total, you still can claim 23 years. That's pretty long. From the first year, you claim for the reinvestment allowances. So this is very much will help the manufacturer a lot. So if you have any question you want to ask about the RA, RA, there's no prior approval. You no need to get prior approval from the income tax. Then please drop us an email or visit our website for further details. But there is a time limit to carry of your unutilized RA. Like just now, we have unutilized business losses and it allows you to carry forward for seven years only to offset for your business losses, business profit. Okay, the next one. Next one, this is a very new and pretty new. Okay, this is about the beholding tax on the payment made to the agents, dealers or the distributors. For example, this is only applicable for the companies. If the companies is the payer and they want to make the payment commission to their agents, to their dealers or distributor, so the company need to withhold this 2% of the beholding tax from the gross amount. And this is not the payment made to the overseas, uh, it's paid for the local agents and local dealers because they try to close the gap for those agents who didn't re report you know, fully of their commission fees. But there is one of the, okay, this is only applicable when you make payment to the individuals, agents, dealers, or distributors. Okay, one of the condition is they will look at your preceding year's threshold. Like when come to next year, 2022. So they will look at your 2021, the total agents commissions paid to these particular agents. If more than 100,000 in form of monetary or in kind, so in when come to year 2022, you make the payment or commission to the agent, you need to deduct 2% from the gross amount. So what are you going to do with this 2%? This 2% you have to remit to the income tax within 30 days, and there's a time limit 30 days from the payment dates. So some of the businessmen, they say, hey, maybe hey, Cindy, I'm very busy or my girl don't know how to do. So can you opt not to deduct this 2% from the agents? Yes, you can definitely. But what's the consequences? The consequences is when the tax agent, they compute of your company tax return. So they will disallow the commission that you paid to the agent because you didn't remit the 2% beholding tax. So this is a very new and bear in mind on this because this will come effectively from year 2022 onwards. Okay, this is the example. Let's look at the example. The second example, in year 2022, let's say you paid commission to an agent. In total, in for the whole year is 115,115. Already above 100,000, right? Yes. Do you need to behold beholding tax in the following year? The answer is yes. That means in year 2023, you need to withhold whatever commission you paid to these particular agents as an individual, you need to withhold 2% on the gross amount. How about you may ask, if I pay to the company, do I still need to withhold 2%? The answer is no, you are not required. Okay, this 2% is only applicable to the individuals. Individuals include the sole proprietors or the partnership partners in the partnerships. Okay, this is the clearer examples you can see. Excuse me. 
let's say in year 2021, you paid 150,000 commission to this agent, say Mr. Mr. Adrian. <coughs> That's why you're required to be full 2% on any commission that you paid to him in year 2022. So the first time, first batch of the commission paid to Adrian is on 1st January 2022. The amount is 30,000, okay? 2% on this 30,000 will be how much? How much is that? It will be $600. So you deduct $600 from the gross income and remit this $600 to the income tax within 30 days from the payment date, okay? And then how much of the net commission that you need to pay to Adrian? You only pay to Adrian on 29,400 only. It's not 30,000. So who is the responsible to do all this? Is the payee, the company itself, who make the payment to the agents. And let's move on to the EPF. <clears throat> EPF, this is not new, okay? Because for the e employee portion, so the contribution of EPF has been reduced uh, since year 2021, the whole year, from 11% to 9%. But you still can opt up not to contribute 9% by fill in, fill in one form. It's called uh, KWSP 17A, the form. Okay, do remain to deduct at 11%. So why the government plan to do so? Because they want to increase the, it's a, they want to increase the employees take home severely and to ease the financial hardship for the taxpayer, for the payer. Okay, for your information here, Okay, this is just a statistic shows by the EPF departments. Okay, you see the EPF, we have about 15 million members. But out of these 15 million members, so it's only 7.6 million are active. Active. That surprisingly, you see 52% of the members, their salary, monthly salary is less than 2,000 only. It's less than 2,000. Okay, so according to the statistics of the EPF, the members, more than half of the EPF members, they have savings less than 10,000 only. Okay, but by right, the EPF, they have a one a guideline we call is a minimum target of 240,000 savings, you know, upon the retirement age, at the age of 55. But only 3% of us, we are afford only to go for the retirement. That means only 3% of their members, they have the savings in their EPF accounts of two, more than 240,000. And 30% of the EPF member have zero amount in the accounts one as well. So this is a chart just for the general knowledge. You can see the expectancy at birth. Generally, females, we, have, we can have longer life compared to males, okay? So the males, the expectation, the life expectancy has increased 1.1 from 72.1 to 73 years old. That means you can live longer now by year 2021. For the female, it has been increased from 1.5 years from 76.8 to 77.8 years old. Okay, so we are talking about we are talking about when you retire at the age of 55 and when you come for 70 years old, 78 years old, at least you have 20 years savings. Enough money for last you up to 20 years. That's why the EPF say minimum you should have 240,000, which is about every year you should have about uh, 24,000. Yeah. If 240 divided by 20 years, about 10,000, 10,000 per year, 12,000 per year. So every, averaging your, every month, you spend only 1,000. So this is the minimum target set by the EPF department. So this is the further work deduction of the safe at work again. Okay, this incentive, this is a new incentive introduced and proposed by the government. According to the statistics, uh, during the COVID-19, about 29% of the cluster of the COVID cluster are originate, originated from the manufacturing. That's why there's the urgency plan and action plans uh, introduced by the government. Okay, 
for the extra SOP need to be added, especially for the factory workers. So this is called safe at work. And this scheme, this scheme, you need to apply to the MITI. You need to apply to the MITI. So what are the benefits for this scheme? If you are the factory or you are the manufacturer, what are the benefits if you fall under this scheme? For sure, you can have a double deduction, which can give you additional uh, relief up to 50,000. Okay, the second thing is, if you are qualified under this scheme, let's say during touch word, during any future pandemic and it's locked down again, so your company, your factory will be given the priority to resume the operation first. The third benefit is, if your workers, factory workers have close contact with the positive case, you no need to close down the whole factory, no. You still run as a normal uh, operation before, even though before the COVID test come out, the workers have the close contact still can able to go back and work. Okay, so just give you an idea what is this call safe at work. Safe bubbles. Okay, under the normal, when you look at the right hand side, the normal, you can see the factory, maybe they have plant A and plant B. And they share the normal workers. They have the same transport of transportation for the bus to send the workers to and fro from the hostel to the factory. And the plant A and plant B workers, they stay in the same uh, hostel also. But under the safe at work bubble, so they put a line. Okay, they have different SOP. That means plant A, you have workers, you have your own transportation and you have your own hostel. Plan B, you have your own transportation and your own hostel. So it will not be affected each other. Of course, there is certain uh, additional SOP uh, you need to be heard to. Okay. The next one, we will talk about this tourism, 10 ringgit for the tourism tax per room per night will be exemption up to next year. 31st December 2022. So I'm done with the budget highlights. Okay, let's move on to the companies. So you said, do we have any questions in the chat box? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, Teresa will answer, answer on this. Now we move on for the impact to the companies. And again, this is not new. The rebates of 20,000 for the new startup business. And now it's supposed to end by end of this year, but now the government have extended it up to next year, 31st December 2021. So how it applies? It applies to the companies. Okay, you have start, you have commenced your business and income somewhere from 1st July 2020 until 31st December 2022. So what are the requirements, the conditions here? There are four conditions to fulfill. The first one is resident company registered under the Company Act 2016, which is the Sanyam Berhad and LLP. Exclude the sole proprietor and partnership. Yeah? And you must be a SME company. SME companies, which means your payout is less than 2.5 million and your turnover not more than 15 million. As I said just now, incorp and start your business between this period, 1st July 2020 up to 31st December 2022. Okay, let's look at here, the rebate. Hey, how to calculate the rebate? You may ask, hey, Cindy, you said 20,000. So how to calculate it? So there's a formula for you to, to, to determine how much is the rebate. First one, they will look at the lower of the following, which is A, B, or C. The A is the actual amount of the operating expenditure. Here meaning is referred to your salary, your rental, your transportation, the company expenses or the lower of the tax payable amount before you offset this rebate. The third one, C, will be 20,000 because the government gives you a maximum 20,000 rebate only. So let's, let, let's look at the scenario number one. If your company incurred have the expenses incurred about 10,000 and the actual tax, okay, after the finalized by your tax agent is 15,000, Okay, so whichever is lower, you can choose 10,000, 15, or 20,000. So you just take the lower amount, which is 10,000. 
That's why you manage to enjoy this 10,000 rebate only. So at the end, your actual tax 15 minus 10,000, the net tax payable is only 5,000. The next one, renovation. For those businessmen, okay, or the bosses, they want to do the renovation during this year or next year, of course, you're welcome to do so. Because under the current practice, any renovation, okay, is not liable to any tax deduction. You cannot claim any tax, okay? But this incentive is not new, as I said, it's just gives you the extension of one more year, up to 31st December, 2022. Again, let's see what are the conditions. First thing, the renovation done must be between this period from 1st March 2020 up to 31st December 2022. Then you have to use for the business purposes. You cannot do the renovation for your own house, for your bungalow, for your semi D, for your condominium. No, it must be used for your office, for your shop lot, for your factory. Okay, how much you can deduct? Maximum is. 300,000. It's not 300,000 per year. This is accumulative 300,000. You can keep maximum, okay, throughout this period. And the last thing you must certify by the external auditors. So any auditors, you can ask us, Adrienio, to help you to certify with a minimum fees, okay, on the renovation claims. Anyhow, your tax agent will ask you on these uh, certified uh, invoices. So let's see what are, here are the list of the renovations that you can claim for the renovation deductions, like the wiring, lighting, water system, aircon system, uh, plaster ceiling, flooring, timber floor, you also can claim. But there is um, exceptional exclude your professional fees. If you want to get architect designer to design of your office, then the fees is not uh, subject to any deduction. Yeah? Please take note and purchase on the antique as well. Okay. This is rental deduction. This is the good news for the resident taxpayer. And this is only applicable for the landlord. For the landlord only. So how? So the landlord, you can enjoy this uh, special rental deduction. Okay. If you give the rental discount to your tenant, and you can enjoy the double deduction on such accounts that you offer to your tenants. The tenants, you can be the SME tenants, can be the non-SME tenants. Non-SME tenants here is referred to your MSC company or the listed company. Huh? Because uh, by this move, it's more persuasive to ask your landlord to give you a reduction in your rental discount. For the SME tenants, whatever the rental discount that you're given to your tenants from April 2020 until 30th June, because they're extended for another six months, 30th June 2022, you can claim for double deduction on the discount given. For the non-SME, it will commence on January 2021 until 30th June 2022. So what are the documents required in order to claim for this uh, special rental deduction? Okay, there are six things. Six things. First thing, if you are the SME, you must get the cert from the SME Corp. Okay, apply through the SME Corp. Second thing is um, the tenant, you must use it for the business purposes. You cannot use this for the director's own stay. Third one, you cannot be so stingy. Then you must give the discount of the rental minimum. 30%, then only you qualify for this special deduction. The fourth one, of course, you must equip with the stamp tendency agreement between the landlord and the tenants. The fifth one is you need to prepare the rental income statement. And the last, you need to have a confirmation letter by the landlord, okay, on the amount of the discount. So these are all the things I think you can be easily prepared. But please bear in mind, do not be so stingy because the rental discount have to be at least 30% in order to enjoy this uh, tax incentive. Just uh, for your information, this is the example of the SME cert. Uh, you can apply through the SME Corp and you are required to pay $100 per company on the application. A further elaboration on how it works on the special rental deductions. Okay, let's say if company A, company A, 
I have a monthly rental of 10,000 per month. One year will be how much? 10,000 times 12 months, one year will be 120,000. So I'm a very good uh, landlord. So I give my tenant discount, 50% discount. Huh? 50% discount, which is discounted 5,000 per month times six months. So 30,000. But in the next six months, I only give them 20,000, 20% uh, discount, which is 12,000. So the net rental income that you receive after discount will be 78,000 only. 78,000. If there's no special rental deduction, so the tax to be paid is 18,000. However, under this scheme, okay, this scheme, then you can claim a special deduction, double deduction on this 30,000 only. Then you may ask me why, Cindy, why only 30,000? I give discount of 42,000. Remember, just now I said, the rental discount has to be at least 30%. So, sorry, we can give you deduction on 30,000. 12,000 is not eligible because it's less than 30%. So from here, the chargeable rental income you need to pay after this special rental deduction is 48,000. The tax only 11,000. Tax savings up to 7,002 according to this case. That's a lot. So please bear in mind if you are the landlord, okay, it applies to individuals as well. If your land, if your tenants is an SME or non-SME, they rented your premises for the business usage, then you have to compute this. See, structure intern program. See, Adrian, you yes, we do apply this uh, incentive. See, it's double deduction. That means for those companies, you tend to get the internship. Internship. If you double deduction, what does it mean? If you pay the internship 1,000 per month, say you have five interns, how much are you going to pay them per month? 5,000, okay? But for the double deduction, the government income tax allow you to claim up to 10,000 because it's double up. You will spend 5,000, income tax allowed to claim 10,000. And this scheme, again, has been extended for another four years, okay? From year 2022 up to year 2025. So what are the conditions? First thing, of course, the student has to be Malaysian citizen. Then the monthly allowances, at least $500. And we are paying about $1,000 to $1,002 per month for the interns. And minimum internship period has to be 10 weeks, which is about 2.5 months minimum. 2.5 months in order to enjoy this uh, double deduction for the ZIP. Okay, where, how? Then you will ask me how, where, why, and when. Okay, where to apply for this tip? You may ask your HR manager. If you do know, you can ask us. Then our HR manager is very good in preparing this SIP application. First thing, you have to go to Talent Corp website and apply. You have to apply first before you get in the intern. Okay, you cannot apply after you get in the intern prior to that. So how to apply? The next question you ask me whether you say, should I have five interns? Should I apply five times? No, you just apply one time, one off. The third, okay, then you have to submit on the renewal basis every year because you will be expired one year. So the next year you need to apply again. And how to apply? You have to apply uh, online, must go for online application. Scholarship. For those companies who are good, like scholarship, like Sunway, they do provide the scholarship. And you can claim for double deduction on the sponsorship of the scholarship to Malaysian students only. And this extension, again, has been extended for another four years, from year 2022 up to year 2025. Conditions to fulfill in order to claim this double deduction is the Malaysian citizen must be a full-time student, no source of income, and the household income of the parents of the students cannot be more than 10,000 per month. Household meaning to say the father and mother income, the total income cannot be more than 10,000 per month. And bear in mind, you cannot sponsor the scholarship for your children. Eh? The directors, they may send the kids to the overseas. Okay, they want to claim this double deduction. No, this is not allowable because your household income already more than 10,000. 
this is applicable for the genuine case. This is a good news for all the companies, micro and SME companies. Okay, these micro and SME companies for the deferment of the six months tax installment payment from January next year up to 30th June next year. And this micro and SME, inclusive of the sole proprietor, that's why you can see here is CP500. Sole proprietor also inclusive. So how to apply? Oh, okay. How to apply this? Uh, automatically granted or subject to approval. We do not have any answer yet, even though there's, like, there's some question raised to the government. So we have to wait again for the FAQ. But anyhow, this is a good news for most of the companies. Huh? Deferment of your six months tax installment payment. Okay, this is the revision, tax estimate revision, CP204 recall. For example, okay, for the ABC Sanyam Berhad, as your year end is 31st December 2021, of course, we are allowed as a company to do the revision in the six months, which is in June, and nine months, which is in September. And now they give you extra one more, uh, another time of revision in the 11 months, which is in November. So for the December year end, so this month, November, this month uh, is the Another chance for you to renew of your CP204. You can submit via online, okay, email to them. So need to wait for their response or not. So they will respond to your email according to the IRP officer. So we just need to submit through the email. So we are very good. You see, we have give you a summary, a summary here. So you just match on which year end of your companies. If your year end in December, so you should look at this row. When is the due date for the 11 months revision? Of, of course, we give you the due dates for the initial tax revision, six months, nine months, and 11 months. So just work accordingly to this table. Um, this is the TCC. It's something new, TCC, because some of the businessmen, they want to get the government projects. And the taxpayer, they are not compliance, you know, in tax. Not compliances, what does it mean? Maybe they are not, uh, they have the backlog cases, that means they do not prepare their accounts. They didn't submit their income tax. They didn't pay tax to the IRB, but they still can get the government jobs. But moving forward, when it comes to year 2023, so the IRB, the government have these uh, rules and regulations for all the contractors, they want to be working together with the government or get the government projects, then you have to be in comply with this TCC cert. That means the cert will say, oh, this, com this company is a very good taxpayer. All the tax record has been filed up to date. There's no outstanding tax, there's no tax compute and penalty. So with this cert, only you can be awarded with the government contract. So for those companies who intend or they have the government project, so maybe you have to file your tax up to date. Up to date. So I'm done with the company tax. Now we move on to the personal tax. Any question, then you can uh, pull up in the, our chat box. Okay. This is the tax relief for EV car. I think a few of my friends, we are looking forward for next year to order this EV car when launched yeah, in Malaysia. Because the government proposing to eliminate all the taxes of the EV car, electric vehicles, including the sales tax and excise duty. So now there's a tax relief of up to a maximum of 2005 on the installation the rental, purchase, or even the subscription fees for electric vehicles, charging facilities. But this only applicable for two years, which is year 2022 and 2023. 
So for the EV car, let's look at the example of uh, BMW iX3. So before the any elimination of the tax, the purchase price is about 317,317. But after the abolishment of the taxes, you just need to pay about 270,000 only. It saves you about 15,000. For the Mini Coopers, it saves you about 20,000. Uh, 20 percent for the mini coupers for the BMW is about 15 percent. Okay, let's move on to the special relief. This is the special relief of 2005 on top of this lifestyle relief of 2005. So, what is the lifestyle relief? Lifestyle relief basically is the purchase of the sports equipment, uh, reading materials, uh, internet bills. Uh, gym subscription as well. So all add up together is 2005. Now, the government has extended, okay, it has the special release for the purchase of the tablets, notebooks, and handphone. You can claim up to how much? 2005 only. If you purchase one new iPhone, maybe four to 5,000, but you still can claim 2005 maximum only on top of the lifestyle relief. And government have now extended for another years up to 2022. Meaning to say in this year, you want to enjoy this incentive, you can buy yourself one iPhone. And next year, you still want to enjoy, you can buy yourself one Surface or new laptop. So you can enjoy two years. Still can enjoy two years of 2005 per year. But please keep all the receipt for the um, very verification by the IRB audit later. Medical treatment expansion. Medical treatment, as you know, we can claim 8,000 of the medical expenses for the serious disease for yourself, the spouse, and even though the children. So what are the serious disease? Here is a mention about the, the AIDS, the Parkinson, the cancer, and heart attack are under the category of serious disease. Whatever medical expenses that you spend to cure all this disease, you can claim up to a maximum of 8,000. And this 8,000 inclusive 1,000 of the medical examination expenses, medical checkup for yourself. And uh, for the vaccination expenses also, vaccination expenses is referred to uh, pneumococcal, influenza, uh, rotavirus, for your kids as well, plus the COVID-19 vaccination. And now the government under the budget 2022 has been expanded the scope up to mental health examination by the psychiatrist or psychologist. So which category of the medical treatment expenses you can claim? You must be registered with the psychiatrist, registered with the Malaysian Medical Council, Psychologists registered with the Malaysian uh, Allied Health Professions and counsellor registered with the Board of Counselor. Because during this COVID-19, I think most of the numbers to look for this, like befrienders in Johor Bahru, the statistics shows the numbers who call them the calling for the mental medical treatments. So it has been increased tremendously. That's why the government have given this expansion the scope to cover all the mental health. Scope of uh, contribution of EPF. So we are allowed to claim the life insurance of 3,000, EPF 4,000. So in total, we can claim 7,000. But it, the government has expanded the scope from year 2022 onwards to cover those um, voluntary contributors including the pensionable civil servants. Yes, you're welcome. Then you still can claim this uh, EPF relief up to 4,000. SOCSOC and uh, EIS. Okay. At the current position, SOCSOC, we can claim SOCSOC up to $250 per year. But now it has expanded the scope for the EIS also you can claim and increase the value up to 350. So what is the EIS? In short, we call it as the Employee Social Security. So how, do, how the EIS work? Actually, is we need to employees and the staff, employers and the staff are required to pay 0.2% on their monthly salary to contribute on this EIS. 
That means is 0.2% if your salary is 1,000, 1,000, then you, you are required to contribute two ringgit for yourself and the boss will contribute two ringgit for you. This is how the EIS works. And what are the benefits to contribute this EIS? EIS is in case the members, EIS member, you lost the job, then you can claim the job allowances within six months up to a certain percentage of your salary. Okay, so there's a rules and terms and conditions to feel, fulfill. For, the, uh, for those who lose their jobs, then you can refer more on the Perkinson website. The very long list of the terms and conditions is stated in their website. Okay, this is the review on the relief for upskill and self-enhancement costs. Most of us, uh, there is an educational fees up to 7,000. Okay, on the study fees that you can claim. That means um, if you, you, after you working experience, you want to pursue like the doctor or the master course in any course, then you can claim up to a maximum of 7,000 on the study fees. But you want to, for the undergraduates of the degree, degrees or lower, uh, then selective uh, course you can claim, which is only law, accounting, and uh, vocational, technicals, and financial Islamic are claimable only. But within this 7,000, they give you the sub-limit of 1,000 for you to claim which is the upskill and self-enhancement cost for yourself. You can be the leadership skill. You can be the, um, the Excel, how to work in the Excel in the pivot table. It can be the management skill. It can be any other courses. As long as these courses recognized by the Ministry of Human Resources, and it has increased the limit from 1,000 to 2,000. Okay, you can claim for two years, 2022 and 2023. Again, please keep the receipt to claim. Child care, kindergarten fees. I think for the child care and kindergarten in this year, I think they only work less than six months. Yes, most of the time because during this COVID pandemic, they have to close. So this child care, if your family, you have a children uh, less than six years old, and you send them, put them into the child care, and this child care has registered uh, with the Ministry of Education, then you can claim up to 3,000 per year. And this uh, relief has been extended for another two years to cover up to year 2023. And bear in mind, one household, you can claim one time only 3,000. Then that means you have one children, either you claim or your husband claim. If your husband income tax is high, then you claim under your husband. But how about if you have two children? Can husband claim one, 3,000, and can the wife claim another 3,000? No need, cannot. Because one household, you can claim maximum 3,000 only, which is per children only. Tourism, domestic tourism. Okay, now we encourage of the Chuti Chuti Malaysia. Chuti Chuti Malaysia. So this um, relief is not new, but has been extended up to year 2022. So any accommodation, the hotel expenses that you incurred, the entrance fees to tourist attraction, like you give the ticket entrance to the Legoland, yeah, you are allowable to claim up to a maximum of 1,000. Husband and wife also you can claim. And now it's an expanded the scope to you take some tour package, okay, go through the licensed travel agents, you can claim. So now this year, keep your receipt. You still have one and a half months for the tourism expenses. You can claim 1,000. Then come to next year, you can claim another one more, 1,000 more. So our team is very kind and good. So you see, they have listed down the whole summary of the personal tax relief. What? are the changes, whether it's increased in the value or it has expanded the scope. So for the SOCSOR, increase from 250 to 350 and expand the scope to the EIS as well. Educational fees increase from 1,000 for the self-enhancement. That means after work, you want to attend any course. As long as under the register board, okay, you can claim up to 2,000. EPF expand the scope to the voluntary 
uh, contribution to the pensioner as well. Medical expenses also expand the scope for the mental health. Okay, but the limit still limit to 1,000. Uh, domestic tourism, 1,000, but expand the scope to the tour package. Extend the time for year 2022. Childcare fees the same, expansion for another two years that you can claim. Lifestyle also expand for another one year, you can claim up to 2005. So these are the summary of the personal tax relief changes during the budget 2022. Okay, let's move on to the last part of the indirect taxes. Here, this is a special voluntary disclosure for the indirect taxes. And this special voluntary disclosure is administered by the custom. Okay, not the income tax, by the custom. And this proposal follow an earlier special voluntary disclosure by the income tax back in year 19, 2018 and 2019. So how it works, if your company have under declared or unpaid uh, sales tax, service tax, custom duty and GST, you can surrender now, surrender now with the condition that they will waive your penalty, either 100% or 50%. So, but when the phase one and phase two the, is not announced yet, it is a timeline. They could say if you surrender now before the year ends, say phase one, 31st December. So they will waive 100% of your penalty. But doesn't mean that you no need to pay money to them. Whatever outstanding still sex, you are required to pay. But they can waive 100% of the penalty. Like our clients, uh, we have a clients, they need to pay about 1.7 still sex plus the penalty. If they are paid, uh, paid, under the phase one, they could waive the penalty of 500,000. They just need to pay the sales tax of 1.2 million only. Okay, so this is the beautiful part of the waiver of the penalty by the custom. So, the special voluntary disclosure of the custom, you look at category one and category two, and this has already passed and due, passed and due. Uh, if the full payment, you make full payment before 31st December 2020, 100% penalty will be uh, waived, like our clients. Okay, that means the clients have to pay 1.2 million before 31st December 2020. They need to pay 1.2 million only instead of 1.7 million. They waive 100% of the penalty. But when you pay after the 31st December 2020, they only can waive 80% of your penalty only. That means they will waive 400,000 of your penalty. You still need to pay penalty of 100,000. Just give you a general knowledge and how much is the penalty incurred by the sales tax, SST, and GST. So the penalty, total penalty incurred is 40%. Okay, maximum they can impose you 40% penalty. Let's move on to the sales tax exemption. The sales tax exemption is on the passenger's car, including of the SUV and MPV, but exclude of the trucks, like the Hilux. Because the Hilux and the trucks, they will consider as commercial cars. There's no sales tax exemption. And this sales tax exemption has been extended for another six months, up to June 2022. Okay, how much to exempt? Okay, 100% sales tax exemption on the completely knocked out. That means CKD. CKD means that they will import the, the parts of the, uh, the car into Malaysia and they will assembly locally. It's 100% sales tax exemption. How about CBO? CBO is <coughs> the import the full car, the whole car into Malaysia. Then you only can get 50% sales tax exemption. Okay. It's, again, this is a service tax. More and more. I think the shopping, shopping trend has changed. So we like to shop online and the phone always together with us. We just need to press and press only, just press and order. So the, the parcel will send to our doorstep. That's why in Adrian, your office almost every day, almost every day we receive many parcels from on behalf, you know, for our colleagues. That's why the trend has changed. So, <laughs> Yeah, every uh, 11, 11, Shopee, 
Taobao, a lot of things, a lot of shoppers now, online shoppers. So at this current position, any courier services, okay, to the licensed service provider subject to service tax. Whereas the courier services that you pay to non, uh, that means service provider, which have not licensed under the Postal Service Act is not subject to service tax. One of the example is the Shopee Express. It will not charge you the service tax. But moving forward, moving forward, all the delivery services charged by service provider only, they say, regardless whether it's registered or non-registered, they will charge you the service tax. Like you paid for the Shopee, maybe the delivery service, about four ringgit and 20 cents, with the service tax of 6%, then you may need to pay extra of 24 cents. Okay, after this. So this one will be implemented soon when come for 1st July 2022. Another six months from now, six or seven months from now. But this is quite minimum, minimum as the individuals. At last, this is the sales tax on low value goods. Sales tax exemption is given eh, on the imported goods, which is less than $500 using the A career. Okay, it excludes the secret tobacco and some wine liquor. It proposed that sales tax exemption for the goods imported via A career value less than 500, even though one ringgit. Okay, the exemption, this exemption is abolished now. So, whatever the Goods less than $500, okay, sent by a career is subject to sales tax. Subject to sales tax. So this one also will effectively from 1st January 2023. So I end my presentation today. Thank you very much. Uh, we open for the Q&A session questions now. Yes. Any questions or answered? Any question you can post here because most of you, you ask about the withholding tax. Withholding tax. Any answer you can raise? Any question? Maybe you can ask us or answer. Or does it not, maybe if you want to share on foreign source income planning, any planning that we can subject? Client. The slide will send you through the email. No worries on the slide. Foreign source. What is exempted? What is that exempted? Foreign source. Um, capital gain is not taxable in the Capital gains? Yeah. Other income? Yeah. Okay. Does that mention any mentioned? Any? Is it double tax or single tax? Uh, you can okay, most of you, you ask about the withholding tax on the 2%. You can say, okay, okay. Yes, Mr. Yeah. 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 There's one question you asked about the children. Children asked about the Airbnb you can claim or not for the domestic tourism relief. Yes, you can claim as long as you register with the Ministry of Tourism and Arts. Okay. Another one is uh, Yap Wai On. Yap Wai On also asks for the six months deferment of the monthly tax installment for SME. When will this installment will actually be due for payment? So the answer is the deferment okay, of the tax installment will follow the due dates as per your CP204 or CP205, ACP500 and form CP205. Uh. That means as long as your tax installment payment due from January to June 2020 has been deferred, has been deferred until the actual tax, when you finalize your actual tax, the time you paid together. Domestic tourism relief, okay, Siu Leong. Siulong asks, domestic tourism relief is carry over relief or annual relief? It's an annual relief of 1,000. Okay, for individual taxpayer, it's an annual relief. Huh? So please keep the receipt. Hotel, accommodation, 
uh, entrance fees and tour packages as well. But you ask about the petrol, the tour can claim or not? No, you cannot claim. Hotel for sure you can claim. Because it's quite packed now, so it's uh, most of us weekends, especially the tourism spots, they are very full. Meaning last year claim, this year can claim also. Last year, uh, yes, last year you claim in year 2020, you still can claim in year 2021. And moving forward, you can claim in year 2022 also. So you can claim up to three years if you have sufficient receipt to claim. 1,000 only. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, Tan Manjun. Manjun asked about the safe at work double D. Is that any application need to make before we claim it? Yes. You need to go to the MITI website, MITI website and apply first. There is a form. Okay, there is a form. They step by step guide you how to apply in the MITI website for you to apply first. Because here, this one, you have your own team. We call it PERT. This team will monitor the SOP compliances for this safe at work in order to claim for the double D. Yeah? So you can claim additional 50,000 up to 50,000 of the uh, tax deduction. Okay, FSI, Kim Wong. Kim Wong asks, FSI no tax as long as revenue income not remitted back to Malaysia. Yes. As long as you all the foreign source income stay outside Malaysia, you're safe. You're not liable to tax. But you cannot enjoy the money. Maybe you have other way, better way to enjoy the foreign source income. Yeah. And then you want to add on? Okay. okay so we let Adrian to add on. Hello. Hello, uh, Adrian. You again? Ah. Uh. Okay, Adrian. Uh, Adrian again. Okay. Uh, just to round up, uh, this budget. Uh, I think is generous. Uh -huh. Compare with uh, budget last year or year before. Uh, I mean, the government uh, is more considerate uh, by giving uh, extension, let's say, uh, tax, uh, tax loss, extend the duration of the tax loss, they can carry forward. Uh, good for the SME. Uh, the self sex exemption for motor vehicle extended, uh, reinvestment allowance extended, um, then RPGT, uh, the free RPGT for five years, uh, after five years. So that also save a lot of hassle on people who in, inherit properties whereby they lost the documents the cost of this. So I think the five years is good. Uh, uh, maybe for Sindh Mahat, uh, we stay because Sindh Mahat will have proper documentation and proper accounting. So the tracking back is easier. But personal, I think it's a good thing uh, uh, for government to, to let go of the 5%. After all, the 5% is not very significant to Malaysian income tax. So the last one, I want to mention at, uh, about the foreign source of income, uh, some sort of planning. Uh, Malaysian, Malaysia is only subject to, Malaysia will only have uh, income tax, uh, plus a little bit of real property gains tax. Uh, the, I mean, real property gains tax uh, is a subset of capital gains tax. 
Can, can, can gain tax uh, in, I have, to, I have to refer back to UK, capital gains tax, okay, what is capital gains? Capital gains include uh, disposal of real property, like uh, RPGT, uh, but they have extra like shares, trading gain in shares, also kept, fall under capital gains, uh, gain in uh, art and antique, uh, chatters, all the small loose items, all these fall under capital gains tax. Uh, so uh, Malaysia is only income tax. Uh, so you want to make capital gain. So Malaysia is better to make capital gains in Malaysia than rather rather than in UK. For example, uh, if you are a fan of antique and art, you do a collection. Or antique and art. Uh, so it's better to collect this antique and art in Malaysia rather than in, in UK, whereby this antique and art is taxable. Uh, so if you do collection here, uh, then you want to send it for auction in UK, you also can do it in UK, but your gain is in Malaysia, which you are not subject to tax. Of course, provided you don't do this, and take art thing as your business. It's a business, you'll be taxed as a normal business income. Uh, so you want to fall, you want to earn this capital gains in Malaysia, whereby there's no tax in Malaysia. Uh, uh, so when you have this remittance thing, so I think we become very complex uh, that you don't want to remit if you were to make your money uh, overseas. Uh, you want to bring back, you bring back by December. If after December, I think no point to bring back. You want to bring back, you bring back now. Other way until after December. Uh, so you have to, to measure how much you need. Uh, uh, what you don't need, then you can leave it outside. But what you need, you better bring back. Let's say you have 5 million. You're not sure whether how much you're going to use. Uh, uh, okay, but you have a, a, a child going to go overseas, then you might need 1 million, 2 million. I think that one you can set aside and keep it for them. But the extra, that you don't really need. So I think preferably you bring back by this month, uh, next month. Uh, so you subsequently you bring back you create more questions than answers. Uh, uh, so I mean, with this, this, this remittance basis, uh, so I think maybe it's gradually, I think we are moving into international tax. Uh, this one is a prelude. So it's, that's the starting point. Uh, so I think eventually, uh, we will be like a developed country. Uh, we have to do, uh, on the earned basis, not on the received basis. Just like accounting with tax on the accrual basis, not on the received basis. Huh? So the time will come that uh, earned basis will be the basis for all taxes. Huh? Uh, is there any other further question? Should we buy it online? Copyrights and distribution money, remittance to Malaysia subject to foreign source income. Yes, yeah, that's right. Business income, yes. That's right. Yeah. And I pass. Ah, uh -huh. uh, Teresa, are answering the question uh, via the computer chat box. Uh, any further questions? Uh, I think Malaysia to me is Malaysia is a semi tax haven. Uh, uh, the world is moving towards international taxes. Uh, so I think it's good for Malaysian to keep the Malaysian passport. Uh, especially if you are rich 
and wealthy uh, because uh, other country will have capital gain tax. Like in Australia, you, in, if you have a property on disposal, the gain on, on property, in, uh, property profit will be taxed under income tax. Uh, Malaysia will tax under capital gain tax. And for individual after five years, it's zero. Uh, the art and take chatter, sport car, and all this, uh, if you make money, you don't need to pay tax. Uh, and the other one bigger thing is inheritance tax. Uh, other developed countries, most of them have inheritance tax. Uh, they're about 30 to 50%. Uh, let's say you live, uh, when we die with 100 Musang King, then they said 20, 20 Musang King exempted, 80% taxable, at say 40%, 32 Musang King will be gone. So that means you only live with 68 Musang King for your, for your next of kin. Uh, so if, if that's the case, might as well you wall up the 100 Musang King before you go. Uh, so you defer it, but the deferment has depreciated by 32%. Uh, so you might as well enjoy as you go along. Uh, so uh, uh, with that, uh, any more questions? If not, uh, thanks for uh, listening to us. Uh, we will send you the slides, uh, email, maybe by the end of the day. Uh, thank you very much. And, and if you have friends who want to, we see you in next session at two to four Mandarin session. Uh, I'll do the introductory whereby my text director with me, Teresa, how many years already? 14 years in total. Uh, but she joined us about 20 years ago. Uh, 14 years in total. Uh, text director, so she will cover uh, the main session in Mandarin. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe we'll see some of you again in the afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. <laughs>